How you guys doing? So I think where I finished last off on the previous video was uh, trying to figure out what to do with the cable chain on the y-axis, this one here. And uh, yeah, so what I've done is come up with this contraption here and it's working pretty good. So it's just a bunch of some of the scrap steel. I think I have a bunch of scrap over here and, and stuff. So it's made out of that and uh, yeah, this piece is kind of it's kind of thin. I think it's uh, one h, well, one eighth inch, uh, but it's like it's you know it's pretty rigid and stuff. So um, I think it's going to work out well. So and this little thing here coming on the side, it just kind of helps it make that little corner. And uh, yeah, the uh, the bottom hole there. That's I haven't decided what I'm going to do with that. I'm probably going to make some kind of stainless steel little box kind of thing so everything goes into so um, flood coolant and chips and stuff doesn't make its way out um, the only kind of bad thing about that I can kind of see right now with having the cable chain flipped up like this is I've created a little low spot let me kind of back up I can this thing's so big it's hard to fit into the same frame there we go so you can see along the gantry, it's a low spot. So when the machine is idle, and let's say I have to uh, purge the uh, the coolant tubes for the spindle, so that's no longer trivial because before you could just um, open up one side and it'll kind of it'll uh, it'll kind of clean itself out that way. But now with the low spot, that's not going to work. But it's not too big of a deal because like with the air compressor, once you open up one of the tubes here, walk back over here, like you open up these tubes and you give it a little tiny bit of air and uh, you don't want to blast it or else you're just gonna, you know, throw coolant everywhere. But that works pretty good, so yeah. So otherwise, yeah, I think this is working really well. The, uh, this uh, steel welded corner it's finally painted. Paint looks pretty good. Uh, I didn't have any problems with the paint this time. So it's hard to focus on all this. A little, little chip there. Uh, yeah, so other than that, uh, I'm working through the X axis, trying to get this in place. So this is all kind of loosey goosey, it's not even attached. Um, over here, I gotta clean out some paint just so that fits. And uh, yeah, my biggest thing right now is uh, because I moved the rail, the top rail over by one, so it, it previously ended over here, and you can tell by you know all the bolts. So bolts here, that bolt was over there before. Uh, so right now, let me see if I can push this thing back. So I don't get a lot of clearance. So like that's less than a centimeter. So what I'll do is, yeah. You know, what's great about this plastic, 3D printed plastic, is you can just hacksaw it and you know shave it and stuff, and it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna take the hacksaw and just chop off this side, and like that's gonna give me another one and a half centimeters, and that'll push everything over, and like I have tons of clearance on this side. And uh, yeah, let me, uh, actually I won't be able to push this all the way. But yeah, the clearance wise, uh, it'll work really well. Other than that, bolts here. So both sides, these are loose, the fronts. Backs are loose too, on both sides. So what happened when I welded this, and you can see in the previous video when I was making these, the, uh, how it pulled up on the, uh, on the top one here, because I put this weld bead down there, pulls everything up. I didn't think that was going to be enough to cause an issue, but it was. So um, if I tighten those down, I get binding on, on both of them, and it's pretty apparent on both of them. Right now, the whole machine, like I'm back spinning the servos right now. But yeah, everything runs relatively smoothly. So what I'll probably do is 
like I got six bolts, three on each side, but I'll probably just shrim, uh, shim this. Maybe it'll be one of the first parts I make is just on the CNC, just mill out some shims once I figure out the, the gap that I need, uh, some sheet metal. And I think that'll just solve that issue. Something where I could just slide in and then it'll, you know, the three bolts on the front and back will hold it in. And that solves that problem. I've been going through uh, trying to track down which uh, servo cables go to what and I've been doing that by you know, energizing things. You can hear a little buzz sound. It's the uh, VFD in there somewhere. There's uh, some moaning. I think that's probably this servo up here. That one you gotta watch because it's got a pulley that can grab you. So, other than that, this one's this one's good. They're all uh, powered right now. Uh, the only thing is uh, this long cable here that goes to the left side of the Y axis. Let me turn this off. It's kind of annoying. Uh, this one here is about the same length as the cables for the y-axis so i'm gonna have to uh, boot up lennox cnc and uh, try and debug and kind of determine which which cables go to what or at least on those two axes the uh the other ones are simple because it's like this is a really short one and then that's a really long one plus this one was really hacked together with the sensor cable for the encoder for the servo. Like I bought proper cable, but at the time when I was running this, I, I was just hacking it together with some other stuff. So I used some ethernet cable. So I got some, some ethernet cable running through this. And surprisingly it's been holding up, it hasn't given me any issues, it hasn't broken yet. And this stuff is solid core. So like, it's bound to break on me. So I'll have to be, uh, you know, I'll change that eventually soon. For the lemon switches, the one that goes on the top is good. This cable is kind of too short though, so it could just be that I'm pulling and I got you know kind of a mess of cables there. Uh, but that one's gonna fit down that little hole over there, and then that goes through the inside of here. Let me see if I can actually show that. Yeah, so there's, you can see that piece of steel there. So that thing is, well, you've probably seen it in the CAD. It's held by these two screws and it, it can slide up and down. So that's how I get my alignment or my, my zero um, position on the Z axis. I don't want to do, uh, oh, and also this one, it, it uh, glances. So it's not like the, the chunk of steel comes directly at the uh, sensor. So there's, with this way, there's no possibility to crash in it. With this, uh, the original old way that I had it, you can see actually on this one how, how I smashed this one. It actually works uh, still though. It fit into that little uh, recess there. I'm not gonna be doing that for that axis. I'm not even sure how I'm gonna do it. But for the y-axis, what I'm thinking of doing is having no nothing in here, but having it underneath here. You know, running the can the cables up to the gantry here, running them uh, on the inside, and I have a lot of space down here to do quite a lot of things. So what I think I'll do is have a chunk of steel or something that I can adjust here probably with a with an adjustment screw, fine adjustment screw so I can help with squaring the machine. Yeah, have the cable kind of run probably on the outside because I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do on the inside of this thing. But I can just have it run on the outside and you know tucked away and uh, yeah you'll never really be able to see it plus chips and other things won't really be a problem. my cell phone it'll actually be easier to move around on that side so that's 
that's the amount of space I have. And uh, for, for instance, yeah, I'm not really sure exactly how I would do it, but there is quite a lot. I'll probably run it through the back so I don't see it. And uh, probably make like a, some kind of bracket that kind of comes out and then um, fits between uh, this uh, slot there where I can put the piece of steel that'll be on the frame and that way it'll never hit and uh, yeah do it that way. For this whole mass over here it might be easier just to work with this stuff is to make all this again. Probably not have it in one piece because I need to I need to be able to adjust with uh, shimming the BK block and the uh, motor mount. So what I might do is have similar thing but without this piece here so I can move it all in and then have some some pill shaped holes so I can slide uh, the, the motor up and then lock it in place and then have my my shims and stuff and then that'll just give me a you know a more solid kind of foundation to uh, get this thing into alignment properly and like ill raw it's like it's 3d printed material so it's a temporary thing in the end but uh, by doing it this way and giving me all like doing all the shims and stuff it like it, it makes things a lot easier to just find the final dimensions when it's on the machine and uh, when I do that I might even try uh, making 3d printed shims here just like you know a bunch of layers and stuff I, you know I don't see why that wouldn't work for that like I have the shims kind of everywhere so I might give that a go the only thing is I don't have a lot of material here on the motor. So it's barely resting on anything. So uh, it's going to have to rely on this, whatever this uh, 3D printed thing is in the end. So it's, you know, I'm going to have to make it a little bit more substantial in size. Um, this piece here, I'll, it'll probably be a good candidate for making the final piece out of uh, milled aluminum, just because it's uh, such a big shape. So I'll probably do that uh, with this bar. I have this four feet bar of 6061. So that'll probably be that. And probably for this one too, just because of the height. The, uh, the ones down here, um, I'll probably make these out of steel and this mount here as I said in the last one I'll probably make this whole thing as one thing so uh, I'll get the alignment of this and this all in one piece and then that way I can just bolt it in and then this is it's like I think it's one centimeter 9.5 centimeters so that's kind of the the gap I'm working with. So overall, yeah, it's uh, going together and uh, I'm really happy how everything turned out over here. Uh, I like this, the way this is going. It's a lot taller. It's kind of out of the way and everything. So yeah, just a few more things, uh, loose ends to finish up on and I'll get this machine running again. So on to here and uh, see you guys next time.